on timing. Someone say timing. The word of the Lord says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over to this Jordan, you and all the people, to the Lord which I am given, to the land in which I am given to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place, receive this promise today, every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you, as I said, to Moses. Someone received that one today. From the wilderness to the Lebanon, to the great river, to the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun. That's a lot of stuff. Shall be your territory. No man, here we go, no man shall be able to stand before you. The city shall not be able to stand before you. Oh, you ain't hearing me. All the days of your life, and as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. If you keep reading on, he tells him three more times, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, and be strong and courageous. And at the end, he says, wherever you go, I will be with you. Father, bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated here this morning. When I first went into the men's home in uh, 1998, <laughs> hey, men's home. I first went into the men's home in 1998. I came into the men's home court committed. And that means, that means, that means a lot. So I went into the, to the home court committed and what they told me is I had to come back three months later for a progress report. And so I was in the home and three days later, they called my name and they told me to put your suit and tie on because you have to go to the Fremont Courthouse today. And I told them that, no, I don't have to go to the Fremont Courthouse. I got 90 days to be here. And they, you know, I learned quickly my first lesson in the home, don't argue with the staff. Yeah, so that's just long story short. I put on my suit, put on my tie, and I was sitting in the Fremont Courthouse that very morning. And sure enough, they never called my name. And then in the afternoon when they were about to take a lunch break, I asked, I approached the bench, and they told me, you know, you're not supposed to be here for three months. And I, I told you, I told the staff, I told you guys, we're here, we're wasting time. And, uh, you know, so now we're going to we go outside. And if you know anything, if you're familiar with the home at all, I know some of you are, that, that when you call the home and they're supposed to come and pick you up, that could be a long time. <laughs> yeah. And I learned that lesson that day, too. So we got on the phone and we called and, you know, sure enough, time goes, time goes, time goes. I'm standing outside of the Fremont Courthouse and lo and behold, I see an old friend. And that old friend began to, was, just got released from another county jail and he was coming up, he was coming up to the courthouse himself and uh, he seen me in a suit and he began to clown me. He said, what are you doing in a suit? You know, this must be a new hustle of yours, you know, what's going on? And I says, no, I'm in, I'm in the Victory Outreach Men's Home. Oh, my God. And it got more. He started clowning me more and clowning me more and clowning me more. And, and, and so anyway, he, he went inside. And uh, I'm not kidding you. The moment he went inside, okay, I've been waiting for the van for a few hours now. The moment he went in, the van drove up. And my overseer, the staff, was a very, very, very good man. He told me, did you see what just happened? I says, no, I didn't, I don't know, you know, my friend clowning me. <laughs> yeah, I, I seen what happened. He goes, no, 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 we weren't here for you to go to court. We were here for your friend. So you got to start praying for your friend. You got to start interceding for your friend. And every morning in, in that home, I would lift up my friend in prayer. And it was around a year later, almost to the day that I came into the home, my friend's mom called the office, got me on the phone and came into the home. That friend's name, that friend's name is Chucky Lopez, who is now pastoring a church in Cape Town, South Africa. I say that to you here today because it's all about God's timing. See, we need to understand here today as we are in a year to build, we need to understand here all about God's timing. Consider this, it took 40 years for Joshua's leadership style to match the moment. Moses had led diplomatically. Moses would lead and he would judge people all day. Moses would sit there from sun up to sundown. And let me, tell me about your feelings. 
Let me hear all about it. How does your wife feel? How are your kids doing? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You must, you're like Dr. Phil. <laughs> and Dr. Oz. And Dr. Oprah. I'll put in. Or Oprah. She's, I don't know who, she, she's a doctor now. He led more diplomatically as people would complain about their desert experience. But by the time they reached Canaan to the promised land, and they began to, they began to encounter fierce enemies, it was calling for a different type of leader now. The times were calling for a different type of leader. The diplomatic leadership was not going to get them, you ain't hearing me today, into the promised land. The times were calling for a more confrontational leader, a military man, skilled leader. Someone say timing. Now when you look at Joshua and you look at his life, commentaries believe that he was even, even leading mil military expeditions back for the Egyptians before they even crossed over to the Red Sea. Someone say timing. Timing will always dictate the type of leader and the type of church that is needed to get us into the promised land. Moses led for 40 years in the desert. Joshua led 30 years conquering Canaan. Moses was a political, diplomatic type of a leader, while Joshua was a military, in-your-face type of a leader. Moses patiently listened to complaints day in and day out. Joshua confronted laziness and confronted fear. Moses led as a peacemaker, but Joshua led as a commander. Moses led and, and provided water from a rock when people got thirsty, but Joshua told the people, dig your own wells when you get thirsty. Two type of different leaders because it was God's time to take them into the promised land. I'm here to tell you today, Victory Outreach San Diego, that God is starting to require a whole different type of individuals so that we can knock these walls down. I've only been here a week and, and I've already kind of figured it out where you're at. Someone say timing. When people do the right things at the right time, success is unavoidable. But when the right leaders meet the right moment and they come together, incredible things. I felt like preaching today. Now, 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 here's what I want to say to you here today. Is in this timing that God has for this church, the leadership, and even individually for every one of us here today, it's important that we don't get ahead of God. That we got to stay in tune with God. We can't get too far behind and we can't get too far ahead of God. Getting ahead of God will always, always bring us trouble. Getting ahead of God always prolongs, listen carefully now, it will always prolong your promise. I know a lot of people personally in my church, they're way ahead of God. And I tell them, you're too ahead of God, you're going to forfeit the promise that God has for you. You notice that Joshua never got ahead of God? I mean, here's a man that the that, that commentaries again believe crossed the Red Sea with them. Here's a man that's seen Moses going face to face, up, going up to the mountain, talking to, Mo, to, to Moses and God face to face. The Bible says as a friend talks to a friend. And then, and then he would be up there. The Ten Commandments were written. Different things would happen. And the Bible says that when Moses would come down from the mountain, at the base of the mountain, Joshua would be right there. Moses would even tell him, go home. You've been here too long. And Joshua would say, nope, I'm going to stay right here. And he would, he would basically beg him to go back home. What about your wife? What about your kids? What about this? And what about that? And Joshua said, no, I'm going to be right here. I feel, my opinion is Joshua would say, I already took care of my family. My wife already knows what time it is. I've already went to Disneyland. I already went here. I already went there. I did it. I did it so I could be here now. He knew, you ain't hearing me. I, my wife is good. She's fine. She knows I'm here. She's not expecting me for another few days. I'm here to serve. I'm here to be close to the temple. I'm here to be close to the tent. And Joshua never got ahead of God. Could you imagine he even seen Moses' good side? And he even seen Moses' bad. Do you, do you know how tempting that is to be negative? Do you know how tempting that is to get discouraged? Do you know how tempting that is to want to give up with inside of your own spirit? But there's no indication that Joshua ever did that. 
See, there are a lot of people and instances in the Bible where people got ahead of God. John chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, and it talks about Lazarus. John chapter 11, verse 21, the Bible says, Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, um, you have not been here. My brother would not have died if you would have been here. So Martha was basically accusing Jesus of being too late to the situation. She was accusing him of messing everything up because he didn't do what she wanted him to do it when, he want, when she wanted him to do it. Did I make sense? that make sense? Try and tell God what to do. You got to do it when I say. How I say it. I want him saved how I want it. When I want Now's not a good time to save him, Lord. You missed that one. God has an appointed time for everything. Just like he had an appointed time for Lazarus. Just like he had an appointed time for Abraham and Sarah's son, promised son, to be born. He also has an appointed time for you. Someone say time. I like what Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says. Check out this version I found. It says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. And in parentheses it says, my timing is not your timing. Says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And in parentheses, my timing is higher and better than your timing. Tell your neighbor, timing. So God's perfect plan, listen carefully now, for our lives has a perfect timing that comes with it. See, if we want to see God's richest and deepest blessings on our lives, we must be willing, and I know you're not going to like this word. You're d- Wait. That's a holy word. Some of you shrugged. Ooh, I felt it. Wait. Come on, tell your neighbor, wait. You got to wait. If you want God's blessing, full blessing, then you have to learn how to wait. I got all kinds of scriptures here on telling you how to wait today. I got like three or four of them. Should I give them to you? Psalms 27 verse 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait on the Lord. That was a two for one. Psalms 37 7 says, resist, or excuse me, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Isaiah 49, 23 says, those who wait on me shall never be put to shame. Come on, somebody. God is never early. God is never late. But God is always right on schedule. As the followers of Christ always struggle, they struggle, they struggle with God's timing within their life. Listen carefully. Therefore, true men, this is what I feel, true men and true women of God have no problem waiting on the Lord. Have absolutely no problem waiting on God. Come on, say I'm waiting. Waiting Waiting on the Lord. Some of you right now, I can see it all, it's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. See, I didn't want to break out Friday night with DJ Russell. He was starting to wake up the inner gangster in me. But I had to be cool. You notice I was just being cool. I was just, I don't want to break out. I had to break out today. I had to save my. I was thinking to myself, DJ Russell came in. He came in Dick Clark, but he left Don Cornelius. That's what I was thinking. Those of you who were there know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. Someone say, I'm waiting on the Lord. See, when God made all these people in the Bible wait on his timing, it was because he was putting everything in place. See, if you're here today and God is making you wait, even right now, he's doing it for the very same reason he was doing it for those in the Bible. So he can get every little detail and perfect position for your life. To give you the most deepest and the most fullest of blessings. In other words, he's working some details out for you right now. He's working it all out right now. He's getting this in order. He's getting this in order. He's getting this in order. And there you are. You're getting impatient. You're, 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 you're hurry up, God. I can't take it anymore. I need it now. I got to have it now. I, got, I, I have to have. I don't have it now. It's going to kill me, man. It's going to. And you know what I discovered? Sometimes give, God will give you what you want. 
just to show you it's not really what you wanted. My four-year-old daughter will bug, 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 daddy, 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 daddy. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I want that doll. I want that doll. I want that. No, not right now. You ain't acting right. You ain't getting that doll. Uh, 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 uh. They break down, right? Uh, okay, okay, okay. But I'm getting you, like, I'll get her the cheap version. So I was going to get you the Toys R Us version. But now I'm going to get you the cheap version. You're going to get what you want. It's just not the quality that I was going to get you had you just waited and behaved yourself. But now that you're begging for it, and now that you can't stay patient for it, and now that you've got to have it now, go ahead. Have it now. Take it. Have it. What I've discovered is some people, oh, you cry for it, and then you cry because you don't want it. <laughs> Why did you give it to me? Yeah. There's two instructions that come on, come on stuff that you cook at home. They got the microwave version. Sometimes three if, you're, if you get the right stuff. You got the microwave version, right? Two minutes. And it's ready. And then, but let it cool down for one minute after that. Stir it and put it back in. It's... You're going to get the meal, but it's just going to be quicker. It's not going to, but you can put it in the oven and wait maybe 22 minutes. And it's going to taste a lot better. It's going to have a little crunch on those wings versus a soggy wing. A little crunch on that wing. And it's going to taste a whole lot. You're going to enjoy it a whole lot better. How about those crock pot meals? Like, you know why those taste so good? Because it takes so long. Yeah, they, got, they don't got nothing less than six hours. They might have a four, I don't know. Mine has six, eight, and 10. And we try to go to six as much as possible, right? But there's some things you just gotta put in in the morning and just put, put 10 hours. Wow, I'll be back, baby. You ever talk to your food? I'll be back. You look around. I'll be back. Just marinate there for... Marinate for daddy a little bit now. Uh, don't look at me. You know you just... Just, I'll be back. And then... Whew, I love you too. And all day, you're just... You got that breakthrough on you. Because you know when you go back home, because you waited... Because you waited, it's all the more worth it. I came into the ministry in the home single. My daughter, Marissa, was four years old. And, and, and got out of the home, went into the church, and was serving God. Like, I was just, like wanted to give back to God and I wanted to give back to the house that was there for me when I got saved and so and so I was single for many years 15 years single and when you're single man like you go to weddings are the most embarrassing I used to hate going to weddings why because when they start throwing those things out I don't garter belts of flowers I don't know what they throw I would always be like oh I gotta use the bathroom and one time, Esteban got the mic, and he goes, where's Anthony? Where's Anthony? I was like, dude, just shut up, dude. Like, like, it was just embarrassing, you know? I guess I was just a good target for everybody to pick on, I guess. 15 years of being single. So I don't want to hear anything from single people here today. Yeah. Like, if you ask me, you know, I'm probably the wrong person you want to ask. Because I might, I might tell you some things you may not want to, want to follow. But I did it, and I pastored the church, I believe it was eight years, Angelica? seven, seven years. Seven years single. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Woo! And people would come and tell me as a pastor, don't you want to get married? And I'm like, duh. <laughs> like, duh. 
Like, yeah, and they would say, well, what about anybody in your church? But I didn't look at the women in my church like that. Like, they were like moms and aunts and spiritual daughters to me. So, you know, so that wasn't. And they try to bring you cookies. You know how they do it. They try to bring you little enchiladas and stuff like that. But, and I was, I would take it. <laughs> You're a fool if you don't take it. But it was, it was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy, and then I began to come out here to San Diego. Okay. And I was coming. My heart was pure. Come on, somebody. I was coming here to get training and to get equipped and to get taught and to get pastored and to get mentored and to get coached. And you guys, most of you have seen, you know, you guys have been around. You've seen, you seen me, you know. And then, and then all of a sudden, Pastor Al, one time, he came for something, and I was taking him to the airport. And he goes, dude, you know the famous question before they... Don't you want to get married? And I'm like, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> and he says, he says, well, what about what about that girl in Helica? And I go, I go, yeah, well, but you know, I, I don't. We don't even know each other, but they've been trying to hook us up. It's a long story. And I says, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I like I like what I see, <laughs> but but I don't know. She's blushing. I said, but I don't know if she's going to like, yeah, I don't know, you know, like, I don't get all emotional, you know, like, caught up, like, I'm trying to be cool. <laughs> and so anyway, he goes like this, he goes, he goes, World Conference, 20, 2011 Conference, he goes, conference is coming up, just take her out for coffee. And I was like, dang, <laughs> yeah, he goes, just you and her, just go, go, you got stamp of approval, just do it. <laughs> and so that was 2011 World Conference. I'm almost done. There's a, there's a method to the madness right now. So she, uh, so we go to conference, right? And you know how we do it, huh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Altar calls. But she got to be here somewhere. You ever make those impure altar calls? Some of you are still making them. You know you're bad when you come with a note already. Anyway, I had a note ready and everything. I'm just kidding. Hey, didn't see her. Didn't see her. It wasn't God's time. Didn't see her the whole time. Like the whole time. And at this time now, now it's like, what the heck, Lord? What's going on? Like now I like... I'm in, I feel like I'm getting into this thing. I don't even. And then I see her on the last day at the Israel, Israel concert. Remember that? On a Saturday. I see her walk by, and I was talking to one of my friends. I already gave up. I said, it's cool. I'll just forget about it. I already kind of like talked talk, talk myself into moving on. I'm moving on already. You ever do that? Look, I moved on. It's not time. It's not time. It wasn't God's time. It wasn't God's time. And so, and so, hey, I talked to her. What's up? What's up, girl? No, I'm just kidding. I said, what's up? You know, hey, I said, Chucky and I, are going to be going to San Diego in a, in a few weeks. And, uh, you know, we're going to have, uh, we're going to go out for some pizza and stuff. So a group of us are going to go out. Uh, maybe we could, maybe we could kind of, <laughs> maybe we could kind of hook up. She goes, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. That's fine. And then she took off and then. So I come here with Chucky. It was a midweek service. And so, you know, Chucky's like a little, like he's like, she's mozo, man. He's like, <laughs> she's mozo in the Greek means he's like nosy. Like he's like, he's got to be involved in everything. So then I got him and another friend on me, you know. And so Chucky speaks. We go to the green room. And then Chucky's like, what are you doing in the green room? And I'm like, he goes, go talk to that girl. She was that girl at the time. Go talk to that girl. So I says, yeah. And then so like, okay. So, so I got to get out of the green room now, you know, and I'm walking, I'm, like, how do you walk around, like, without this desperate kind of, like, God's timing, come on, talk to me, waiting, waiting on God, isn't always fun, and no one said it was easy, but there I was, you know, kind of, and one of the girls, she used to hang out, she was hanging out with at the time, she's seen me, she's seen the look, she goes, Pastor, come here, she goes, (laughs) 
So I was like, oh, she's, she's there. <laughs> so, you know, hey, walk into the, to the cafe. Oh, hey, how are you? <laughs> we start talking. And like, okay, so we're going to go out. It's going to be tomorrow. It's going to be Thursday. We got the time. It's going to work out. And I says, okay, so, um, so can I get your number? Or, and she goes, she goes, talk to my leader. That was her first knee-jerk reaction. <laughs> Talk to my leader. Yeah, you laugh. You should have <laughs> seen the look. I'm, and I was like, oh, she shot me down, dude. <laughs> then I had to take the walk back into the green room. And there's Chucky. What happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> I had to play. Oh, it, we're going to still go out tomorrow. He goes, did you get her number? I says, uh, no, we're still working on that. What's my point is it was God's timing. Come on, single people. God's timing. Some of us give our number away so easily. It was the right answer, the wrong answer. I don't know. It was the right answer at that time. Yeah. It was the, that, was her first, that was her first conviction in her own personal life was just talk to my leader. I don't know. Later on, we found out she got nervous. I don't know. I still don't believe that story, but I don't know. <laughs> First, go talk to my leader. Come on, who still does that? Some of us are like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll what's your, what's, how can I get this number to you? Got quiet. So anyway, long story short, we get married. Where's the piano? Where's the piano? Come up, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Timing, God's timing. Okay, God's timing. Listen. This is important, man. Some of you, some of you single people got to catch this. So, uh, matter of fact, yesterday was our six-year wedding anniversary. We went back to the Italian restaurant in Coronado. Come on, somebody. Where Sister Anna helped put it all together. Yeah. And, and so, and then when we got, became fiance, I barely started holding her hand. Yeah. We weren't all. <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, girl, you mine now. Oh, oh. All caliente and all that, man. Yeah. Some of us, like, it's amazing how quick you are to switch your status from single to in a relationship. Like, so fast to say you're hooked up and in a relationship. So fast. See, you got to wait. It just shows, to me, it shows immaturity really does like show like don't be so desperate and hard up man like stay be happy single like live your life single be happy single. if you're not happy single you ain't gonna be happy married man I'm gonna tell you right now I was fulfilled happy being single but there 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 we already held her hand <laughs> God's timing baby God's timing waiting on the Lord Waiting on the Lord. Just waiting on the Lord. Waiting on God. Some of you are waiting on God. Maybe not in a relationship right now, but there's something that you're waiting on God for. There's something and you're, and you're frustrated and you're, and you're kind of like wanting God to hurry. You're wanting to take matters into your own hands. You're wanting to pick up the phone and call. You're wanting to get involved. You're wanting to put your hand involved and God's saying no. God's using me to tell you no. Stop right where you're at and let God... Let God, let God fight your battles. Let God come through for you. It's all in God's timing. If you want the best thing for your life, you're going to have to learn to wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall walk. They shall run. They shall fly like eagles. Those who wait on God, I'm telling you right now, God is renewing you right now. You feel weak. Frustrated, but victory out in San Diego. It's time to wait on the Lord. Lift up those hands all over the